Hi everyone, in this video and possibly series of video, I want to share with you my experience learning shaders. I've been doing game development for about a year and a half now and when it comes to writing shaders myself, I'm always scared and I think I can't. But I don't want that anymore, so I decided to learn how to make shaders. Because I learned the best by making stuff myself, I decided to learn by trying to reproduce effects I see in games and everywhere else. For this first episode, I'm starting with a very simple shader that I saw on the Epic Game Launcher. A little disclaimer, I'm making these videos as I'm learning shaders, so please be kind with me. I'm here to learn and share it with you, so if I'm making mistakes or if you have a better solution, please tell me in the comments or make a pull request on my GitHub repo, link in the description. Now that it is said, let's get started. I saw this effect in the Epic Game Launcher. When you download the game, there's this cool effect where the image is in grayscale to start off and becomes colored as you your download progresses. I think it's a good starting point to learn about shaders as it should be relatively easy to make. So let's get to Godot. To make this shader, I'm using a simple image. It's the one I'm using on my GitHub repo. To create the shader, under Material, click New Shader Material, and under Shader, New Shader. I'm choosing to write the shader for now, but I think it could totally be done with a visual shader. This is something I need to try in the future, especially because I'm used to visual shaders with Blender. When we start a shader, we must start by telling Godot what is the shader type. I know I want a canvas item because I'm working in 2D. Spatial would be for 3D rendering and particles for particle system. The first thing I want to do is turn the whole image to grayscale. For that, I check the code from Kids Can Code Grayscale Shader. It's pretty simple. We want to make the average of the R, G and B channel. For that, we first need to sample the image. We do that by using the texture function. I'm passing texture, which is the texture of the image because the shader is a applied to this image. UV is the coordinate of the pixel we're sampling. We'll get back to the UV right after because this is super important. Then I calculate the average by summing the R, G and B components of the pixel and dividing it by 3. To visualize this, we can plug our calculation into the output of the shader. We do that by setting the RGB components of the color output. Little tips, if you create a vector by passing only one value, it'll be used for every component of the vector. So here my vector Vec3 average is equivalent to Vec3 average average average. Also, you can note that we are not using the alpha channel, so the transparency would be lost. We can keep it by simply setting the color output alpha channel to be the alpha channel of the texture we sampled earlier. Note that the technique of getting the average of the colors to make grayscale output is not the most accurate for the human eye. I've linked in the description a cool article about that, but in short, our eyes are more more sensitive to certain colors, so it would be more accurate to do a weighted average. Okay, now that we have the grayscale shader, we need to find a way to select between colors and grayscale. Also, I want to be able to set this limit from the script. For that, we'll use a uniform. It's basically a variable that can be set outside of the shader. So for example, in the editor or through the script. I'll call it percentage, as it will represent the percentage that has been downloaded. I'm using a float because my percentage is going to be from 0 to 1. Also, I'm setting a hint range to make sure the value can't be set lower than 0 or higher than 1. Super useful to test the shader in the editor. Now that we have this percentage value, we need to find a way to set the pixel color based on this value. Basically, if the pixel position is smaller than the percentage, it must be its original color, and if it's higher, it must be grayscale. Remember, earlier I talked about the UV coordinates of the texture. Well, this is going to be useful now. Basically, the UV is a vector mapping the texture from 0 to 1. So the first pixel is 0, 0, and the last one in the bottom right corner is 1, 1. Because in shaders, colors are represented with values between 0 and 1, we can actually visualize the UV coordinates. By plugging the UV inside of Vec3 and using it as the output color, we can see the value changing. So if I plug the Y component, we can see a gradient going from 0, black at the top, to 1, white at the bottom. And and if we use the X component this time, we see a horizontal gradient. This looks like something very useful to make our loading effect, right? So now we know we have to use the X component of the UV coordinates. We now need to compare the UV.X value to the percentage value for each pixel. 
How can we do that? As a programmer, my first instinct is to make an if statement. The pseudocode would be something like this. If uv.x is inferior or equal to percentage, color.rgb is equal to main text.rgb. Else, color.rgb is equal to average. That way, we take the original color of the pixel, only if the uv coordinate is lower or equal to the current percentage value. This would be simple, but it's not the best way to do that on a GPU. To give you a quick explanation, a shader is a piece of code that is compiled and then run on the GPU. It's powerful because the GPU has hundreds if not thousands of cores, and so it can run this shader in parallel for a lot of pixels at the same time, where a CPU would have to go through each pixel sequentially and run the code. The GPU can actually do that for a whole lot of pixels at the same time, so why can't we use if statements? In short, GPUs are made differently to CPUs, and they are not good at branching code, like if statement. I won't go over why here, but you can check a response from Stack Exchange that I linked in the description if you're interested. Also, I'm not entirely sure how it would affect performance in real life, but learning different techniques is a good way to keep our brain working, so I think it's worth it. We can actually write our logic in another way, and for that, we want to use the step function. This is a built-in function that takes two arguments, a and b, and returns zero if b is lower than a, and one otherwise. It's basically doing a comparison, so we can use that to choose between color and grayscale. So by writing the following, we are doing exactly that. Let's take a percentage with a value of 0.5 to see. The first part of the operation will keep the original color. If the uv.x is lower than percentage, step returns 1. So main tx.rgb value is kept. For the second part, we simply reverse a and b in the step function. So we check if percentage is smaller than uv.x. Because this is not the case, this part is equal to zero, so the grayscale part is equal to zero also. To sum up, all uv.x inferior to percentage will take the left part of the operation, and the uv.x superior to percentage, the right. And with that, we can simply change the percentage to animate the loading. Of course, you could do some more processing. Maybe add a bar to make a better delimitation between the color and the grayscale, or add a wave-like effect to make the loading more interesting. But I leave that to you. I hope you like this video. This was a cool experience for me to make this shader. Remember that I'm learning as I'm making these videos. So if I'm making mistakes or things could be better, please tell me. Or better, make a pull request on GitHub. I already have lots of ideas to make. But if you have suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. As always, the sources are available on my GitHub. Link in the description. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.